So we'll make a right here off the Daniel Webster Highway. Blair Road? Yep. Blair Road is All where right. we're heading. And our destination is right there. Oh, cool. It's an old wooden covered bridge. That's Blair Covered Bridge. Uh, we can pull over right over here. I love these old covered bridges. Yeah. They're picturesque New England. And this one in Campton, New Hampshire is no different. It seems like all these bridges have a story too. And Blair Covered Bridge is no different there. They say the bridge is cursed. Ooh, cursed? Cursed. There's stories of a mysterious arson fire, a horse who drowned, and maybe even the wrath of God all competing to destroy this bridge forever. Hello, I'm Jeff Belanger, and welcome to episode 229 of the New England Legends podcast. Give us about 10 minutes. We'll give you something strange to talk about today. And I'm Ray Osher. Thank you for joining us on our mission to chronicle every legend in New England one story at a time. We're a community of legend seekers who love connecting with our history and communities. And we love when you guys get involved. There's so many ways to connect with us. There's our website that features our entire archive of episodes, plus video clips from the New England Legends television series available on Amazon Prime right now. There's our free New England Legends app for your smartphone that has this amazing map to every location we've covered so far, so you can check it out for yourself. You can find Jeff and I on social media, of course, and there's our super secret Facebook group where thousands of people are sharing their favorite local legends. Before we explore this cursed bridge in Campton, New Hampshire, we want to take just a minute to thank our Patreon patrons. Yes, our patrons are the backbone of everything we do at New England Legends. They help offset our hosting, production, and marketing costs. They keep us going and growing. We're so grateful to this inner circle of our legend hunting community. If you can help us out, for just 3 bucks per month, you'll get early access to new episodes, plus bonus episodes and content that no one else gets to hear. Just head over to patreon.com slash New England Legends to sign up. So, Jeff, this covered bridge in Campton is the picture of New England. It is. The bridge spans the Pemi Joasset River, or Pemi, as the locals call it, and connects routes 175 to the east to Route 3 and Interstate 93 to the west at the end of Blair Road. But... This bridge is a bit longer than your typical covered wooden bridge. Yeah, I can see that. The Blair Bridge is just shy of 293 feet in length, almost a whole football field. And I love the sign over the top of the bridge. Yeah. It reads, $5 fine for riding or driving on the bridge faster than a walk. (laughs) I have to believe this is an old sign. $5 to speed seems... You know, kind of like a bargain. (laughs) The sign is quaint, and I'm sure the local Camden police would write you a ticket north of $5 for speeding here today. Now, the first version of the bridge was constructed by Hiram Merrill in 1829 and cost $1,000. It stood for 40 years until something bad happened. Something bad that may have been dictated by the highest authority. So let's head back to 1869 and find out. It's July of 1869 here in Campton, New Hampshire, and something is disturbing a local man named Lem Parker. In the coming days, Parker becomes convinced that God is telling him to burn down the Blair Bridge. We can only speculate as to why Lem Parker, or God for that matter, would want this bridge destroyed, but there's a hint of a clue from the August 14th, 1868 Boston Evening Transcript newspaper. But that's almost a year ago. Right. So this letter is from a person signing herself only as H, who writes in about the splendor of the region. Among the numberless letters appearing in your columns descriptive of places familiar and unfamiliar, resorted to by countless numbers during heated term, possibly an account of a trip in the Granite State may interest some of your readers. We left Boston by the Boston and Main Railroad and reached Plymouth, New Hampshire, after a ride of six hours, which was very pleasant. Leaving Plymouth, which is well known to travelers in this region, we rode seven miles farther to West Campton, which, if not as well known as the former place, certainly deserves to be so, for a more charming spot could hardly be selected among the numerous attractive localities with which New England abounds. H. goes on to describe the great beauty of the Pemijuasset Valley and how the town is built on both sides of the river, West Campton 
and Campton Village. And how does one cross that river? The Blair Wooden Bridge. The Blair Wooden mm. Bridge. So here in the summer of 1869, tourism has picked up. Word is spreading that Campton is a place worth visiting. How it's nestled so close to the majestic White Mountains in the central part of the state. It's quaint. And now, it's getting a little too crowded for the likes of Lem Parker. The town was perfectly quiet before these damn tourists started coming here. There's more here than last year. They just keep showing up, these strangers. These people from the big cities with their money and fancy clothes and their sinning ways. Lem can't take it anymore. It's the evening of Wednesday, July 28th, when Lem Parker sneaks onto the Blair Bridge. There's no one around. It's quiet. So quiet. Feeling that these actions are good, and that God just told him to do it, Lem sets fire to the bridge. Not satisfied to light one small fire, he sets the wooden bridge ablaze in several spots, then races off into the night. By the next day, nearly one half of the bridge is completely wiped out by the fire. Crossing the Pemi River here is not possible now. A few things are clear now to the Compton authorities. The fire was intentionally set, and the damage is going to cost about $5,000 to repair. It's costly. Folks in town immediately start asking each other, who would do such a thing? That's when Lem Parker sounds off. God told me to do it. The Campton locals stare at Lem. Uh, Sure, he's a little off, but this hurts everybody in town. Parker is arrested, but when he stands before the judge, the charges are dropped. Now, why would you drop the charges when the guy says that he did it? Well, first, there's no witnesses. And second, the judge isn't sure he believes old Lem. The guy's delusional. I mean, maybe he's taking credit for a crime he didn't commit. So the case is dropped. But the Blair Bridge is still destroyed. And Lem Parker claims it was because God wanted him to do it. All right, well, that's unfortunate. But these things do happen. Sure, they do. And as with many town projects that cost a bunch of money, Campton decides to, you know, percolate on the issue for now. No one likes committing a small fortune in haste. It's just a few months later when a second event speeds up the town's decision. A local doctor is riding along Blair Road. He needs to cross the river. Everyone understands the bridge is out. But he figures, logically, I might add, that the bridge was built here because this must be a shallow area of the river and probably one of the most narrow places to cross. So the doctor rides his horse into the water. But the river is deeper and stronger than the doctor figured. And suddenly, the horse and doctor are swept by the current. The doctor is pulled from the water, but his horse tragically drowns in the Pemi River. This event seals it for the town of Campton. Reconstruction of the Blair Bridge begins immediately. By 1870, the bridge is open once again, featuring a sign at the top warning of a $5 fine for traveling across the bridge at a pace faster than a walk. The Blair Bridge stands for another century. But wood doesn't last forever, no matter how well you take care of it. The bridge is open to elements, and now cars and trucks are passing over the bridge. Those vehicles weigh a lot more than a horse and carriage. It's more wear and tear on the structure. By 1977, the bridge needs to be rebuilt. Covered bridge expert Milton S. Gratton is called in. At a cost of almost $60,000, the Blair Bridge is back to its former glory. The bridge is New Hampshire's only surviving example of a trust design bridge patented by Colonel Stephen Long. While the arson fire and the drowning horse are a distant memory at this point, little events continue to occur on the bridge. Some cars crash into the bridge, damaging both the structure and the vehicles. Yeah, well, car crashes happen. Well, sure they do. But when they occur, people think back to the other bad things that happen here. But then another event strikes, this time an act of God. It's August 28, 2011, when a storm the likes the region hasn't seen in our lifetime hits Campton. Hurricane Irene, now a tropical storm, strikes the area bringing with it 11 inches of rain. The gale force winds snap trees like twigs and send several mighty branches launching at the Blair Bridge like missiles, damaging the bridge and making it unusable once again. 
Now at this point, the state of New Hampshire steps in and recommends replacing the bridge with a stronger steel version. But the people of Campton, they won't hear it. So at a cost of $2.5 million, the Blair Bridge is rebuilt once again. And I love that the $5 sign is still here. And that brings us back to today. So is the curse lifted now that there's a new bridge here? Well, there are still accidents here. Back in February of 2021, a truck too tall to clear the bridge hit the structure and caused some damage. Which makes people look back at all the other bad events and reach the logical conclusion that the bridge is still cursed. Clearly. Now today, the covered bridge farm table sits on the western side of the bridge, so people come here to eat and they can take a short walk over the picturesque bridge. Now, a bridge that cost $1,000 to build in 1829, $60,000 to rebuild in 1977, and $2.5 million to rebuild after 2011. Talk <laughs> about inflation. Yeah. Now, I also read online about the bridge being haunted. Well, the haunted reputation likely comes from people confusing this covered bridge with others in New England. All right. Well, that makes sense. This isn't the first covered bridge we've explored on the podcast. No, we explored Emily's Haunted Bridge in Stowe, Vermont, yeah. back in episode 13, and the Eunice Williams Covered Bridge right. in Greenfield, Massachusetts, back in episode 82. I guess it's like an old house. At some point, you assume they're all haunted. <laughs> <laughs> this bridge has the look, for sure. Still, between the arson, the accidents, and the hurricane, you can't help but wonder why this bridge has had more than its share of problems. A curse is a curse if you believe in it. Well, we've seen that before in all kinds of places. That we have. We didn't say it earlier, but Happy New Year to you and yours. We're grateful to have you with us. If you ever feel like calling or texting your old buddies, Jeff and Ray, you can do that anytime by reaching out to our legend line at 617-444-9683. You can even leave our show closing on there for us if you want to hear yourself on a future episode. Also, if you don't already subscribe to our podcast, do it. It's free. We also deeply appreciate it when you post a review or share your favorite episodes on your social media. Definitely. It goes a long way in helping our community grow. We'd like to thank Lisa Strakowski for lending her voice acting talent this week. Lisa has a brand new podcast called Visit with Spirit that you should check out. And of course, our theme music is by John Judd. Until next time, remember, the bazaar is closer than you think. Mm-hmm.